This video will discuss how accounts, debits, and credits are used to record business transactions. This is the solution for problem 1-1A. We recorded transactions using a tabular summary. This might work for a small company like Pioneer that had only 11 transactions, but as the business expands, this method will not be sufficient for recording transactions. We need a formal structure or way to enter transactions into the accounting system. This involves accounts, debits, and credits rather than a plus or minus system. An account is an individual accounting record of increases and decreases in a specific asset, liability, or stockholder's equity item. In its simplest form, an account consists of three parts a title, a left or debit side, and a right or credit side. Because the format of an account resembles the letter T, we often refer to it as a T account. We will have an account for each item listed on our chart of accounts. Each transaction must affect two or more accounts to keep the basic accounting equation in balance. So we must record each transaction by debiting at least one account and crediting another. In other words, for each transaction, debits must equal credits. When recording transactions, follow these steps. First, we identify the accounts. The second step is we determine the effects. Did the account increase or decrease? We now have one more step, which is to translate the effects into debits and credits. Let's revisit problem 1-1a and look at that first transaction. In this transaction, both cash and common stock increased. If we translate that into debits and credits, it would result in a debit to cash and a credit to common stock. So now we need to review the debit and credit rules. Assets are on the left side of the equation and increase with debits, which is on the left side of the T account. Liabilities and stockholders' equity are on the right side of the equation, and they increase with credits, which is on the right side of the T account. The effect of debits and credits on revenue, expense, and dividend accounts are the same as their effect on stockholders' equity. When a company recognizes revenues, stockholders' equity increases. Credits increase revenue accounts and debits decrease them. Expenses and dividends reduce stockholders' equity, so they will be the opposite of revenue accounts. These accounts are increased by debits and decreased by credits. This image summarizes the debit and credit rules and the effects on each type of account. Study this diagram carefully. It will help you understand the fundamentals of a double entry system. This is an alternative to the expanded equation model that summarizes debits and credit rules using accounts. The normal balance of an account is on the side where an increase in the account is recorded. Assets have a normal balance of a debit. This means that debits will increase these accounts and credits will reduce or decrease these accounts. Liabilities and stockholders' equity accounts, such as common stock and retained earnings, have a normal balance of a credit. That means that credits will increase these accounts and debits will decrease or reduce these accounts. Dividends and expenses have a normal balance of a debit. This means that debits will increase these accounts and credits will reduce them. Whereas revenue, the normal balance will be a credit, which means credits will increase these accounts and debits will decrease. An acronym to help you remember the debit and credit rules is DEAD, where D is debits, E is expense, A is assets, 
and D represents dividends. So for these three accounts, the normal balance is a debit, which means debits will increase these accounts and credits will decrease them. Let's practice translating increases and decreases into debits and credits. If accounts receivable increases, which is an asset, you will debit this account. If cash, which is also an asset, increases, you will debit this account. If cash decreases, you will credit this account. If common stock increases, you will credit this account. If accounts payable, which is a liability, increases, you will credit this account. If accounts payable decreases, you will debit this account. Let's revisit problem 1-1a and convert this tabular summary or a plus minus system into journal entries. You've already identified the accounts as well as the effects. So the next step is to translate the increase or decrease into debits and credits. For number one, we identified that both cash and common stock were increasing. Cash is an asset, so debits increase assets. So we need to debit cash for $10,000 cash. Common stock increases with credits, so we need to credit this account for the same amount. In transaction number two, we identified that equipment was increasing and cash was decreasing. Both of these accounts are assets, so we need to debit the equipment for $5,000 and credit cash for the same amount. For number three, we had identified an expense and a decrease in cash. Debits increase expenses and credits reduce assets. So in this transaction, we must debit rent expense and credit cash for $400. Please consider pausing this video and identifying the debits and credits for the next three transactions. For number four, we identified that cash is decreasing and supplies are increasing. Both of these accounts are assets, so we need to debit supplies and credit cash for $300. In transaction number four, we identified an increase to accounts payable, and we also need to record advertising expense. Expenses increase with debits, and liabilities increase with credits. So we would debit advertising expense and credit accounts payable for $750. For transaction number six, we identified both cash and service revenue were increasing. Assets increase with debits and revenue increases with credits. So we would debit cash and credit service revenue for $4,700. Please consider pausing this video and identifying the debits and credits for the next three transactions. If you see the word paid, I want you to immediately think credit cash. Now, the other part of this transaction is dividends, and dividends increase with debits. So you would debit dividends and credit cash for $700. For transaction number eight, we see the word paid again, so we know the credit is to cash. We also know that expenses increase with debits, so we would debit salary and wages expense, and credit cash for $1,000. For transaction number nine, we see the word paid once more. So we know the credit is to cash. And we also know expenses increase with debits. So we would debit utilities expense and credit cash for $140. Again, please consider pausing this video and identifying the debits and credits for the next two transactions.
For transaction number 10, we identified that both accounts receivable and revenue were increasing. Assets increase with debits and revenue increases with credits. So we would debit accounts receivable and credit service revenue for $1,100. Lastly, in transaction number 11, we identified cash increasing and accounts receivable decreasing. Both of these accounts are assets, so we need to debit cash and credit accounts receivable for $120. The last thing I want to mention is that we always enter debits first, followed by credits.